Go. Uh, just a sec, Kylos. I just lost my. Uh, here we go. Here we go. Let me share screen. Okay, so uh, welcome everybody to session three, uh, uh, talking about Lightroom basics and uh, when to use Photoshop. What I'd like to do this uh, session is to quit. Uh, there's some information I need to throw out front to you about presets and some other information I think you'll find helpful, but I'm trying to switch it over a little bit now to where it's more hands-on. Uh, what I found from doing the class last year and a little bit of this year is a lot of you just want to learn how to do basic editing and do it well and know some of the capabilities that may give your picture just a little bit of a punch. So that's what we're trying to do here. So I think you'll see this evening, we got some photos that you guys will be working on and uh, just kind of running through it. So um, I was going to ask Chuck, how was file importing work? Uh, Rosary, were, were you trying to bring uh, your files into Lightroom, or was it, um, or was it Marge who was doing that? I can't remember. I actually think it was both of us. Okay, yeah. how'd that work out for you? Um, I figured it out. What I did was I um, took all of my um, Photoshop has. I mean, um, Apple has Apple. Um, they call them albums, and uh -huh. they're kind of files with a certain topic. And I just dragged each one over to my external hard drive. And then I um, uploaded them from there. Okay. So it did two things. It, um, it backed them up on the external hard drive. And then I was able to, to get them because I couldn't do it directly, or at least I didn't know how to get them directly from um, my Apple okay. program, photo, okay. whatever. Now, uh, Laura, you're still doing the uh, Lightroom web version right um are all of your files up in the cloud in the <laughs> cloud? is laura still on she's on mute okay i was muted sorry um i i was using the web version but all of my files were still stored locally and then okay. I noticed that the Lightroom Classic was included in my monthly subscription to Adobe yes. Cloud. So I just said, well, to hell with it and started using Classic again. So I've had no problems bringing photos in and playing with them and, and stuff. So I, um, I'd like to clarify one thing to, to tag on to you, Laura is that uh, Rob was over last week. We, we were working on his, uh, on some stuff. And uh, he said he was paying $19.99 a month. And I said, Rob, stop, don't wait. And there's a plan that's just Lightroom and Photoshop. And like you said, Laura, you can do the mm -hmm. web-based, you can do both of them if you want. But mm -hmm. uh, I think that borders on being crazy, but that's me. Um, yes, very crazy. But uh, but if you guys, is is everyone who, who does Lightroom, uh, are, are you guys on the $9.99 a month plan or cheaper? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I, okay. I did. Yes. I, I'm on the $9.99 too. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And, and, and me too. Um, Marge, there you are. I see you, girl. <laughs> <laughs> so I got to ask Marge the question. So um, were you able to get a copy of the Creative Cloud through your son-in-law? You know what? I just decided that I was just going to do my own thing. His life is very complex right now. And <laughs> I thought I, I just went ahead and bit the bullet and signed up and I couldn't figure out how to cancel and I couldn't access him. Um, so I just decided that I was just gonna carry on. Well, I, I gotta share share a comment from uh, Marjorie's mentor who's- uh -oh. no It's not, he, he, uh, hasn't, he hasn't tried to like, uh, he didn't send me a bad report card, did he? Well, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm gonna have to share what he said. Okay. I, <laughs> I was talking to Milton. I said, hey, Marge is really great. She's really interested. She's like Rosary and, and Laura and Judy and all the ladies. 
uh, Michael, uh, we're all kind of laid back, but uh, <laughs> but all the ladies are in there. They're they're doing it. And I said, I'm, I just had a great time with Marge when I worked, worked with uh, her and Rosary. And Milk kind of paused a minute and he said, are we talking about the same Marge? <laughs> <laughs> it's true. I am the problem child. Marge, I'm pulling your leg. I'm pulling your leg. Oh, no. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm the problem child. <laughs> Okay, uh, what I wanted to do is catch you guys up because the classes before were uh, importing and setting up your environment for, for Lightroom. I wanted to make sure that you didn't have any problems so far and that you've already started doing, doing the editing. And Michael, uh, hats off again to you for honorable mention last month uh, with the oh. Woodlands. Uh, and awesome. It, yeah, it really looked good. Yeah, really good. so Pat, I do have a question. Sure. Where I'm running into trouble is I'll go ahead and import, work on the photos, go to something else, and then I can't find where those photos were that I originally imported. So, okay. you know, it says catalog, but I try to go back to the catalog and then I can't find it. And then they, it won't let me pull it up again. So. Okay. When you've closed out and when you want to go back, that's where I need a little help to go figure out how to get back to those files I want to work on. Okay. Can you hold that thought till we get about two thirds of the way in? And Sounds I perfect to me. Perfect yes. time to talk about mm -hmm. it. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So here's here's the rundown. Uh, rather than sitting here showing you stuff, let's kind of look at it. And again, this uh, PowerPoint deck I'll send to you. So Hylos knows this uh, keyboard shortcut really well because we nope. used this last year. So uh, so the ones in red uh, folks are the ones I use a lot. Uh, so if a keyboard shortcut <laughs> is the same in Lightroom and Photoshop, then uh, you can see like the first five or six right there show LR and PS. So all those can, so the keys can be used in both applications. So, uh, and again, I'll send this to you right after the uh, show and uh, you guys can print it out. You can do whatever you want. I just found out the ones in red, I use easily four or five times every time I sit down and do my editing. Uh, next up is page two of the keyboard shortcuts. And again, uh, stuff I use quite a bit is, is in here. And uh, so it's here for you, I'd rather, not spend a lot of time talking about it. You guys got it. There it is. What I'd like to do is bring over. Uh, so we're also going to be talking about a thing called an auto button. It's within the develop module and it's under the uh, tone or the basic and the tone panel. And it's a great tool for you. I'm, I was always kind of a purist up front. And then I realized over the years that if Lightroom has gotten a little bit better and it can kind of get me going with how the edits will be, then I'm going to use it. So there's a button on there we'll talk about here during one of the uh, uh, slides that uh, you're going to be working on uh, using the auto button. We're also going to look how to quickly change colors uh, within Lightroom. It's real easy. Uh, Photoshop, if you want to go with the gamut even more, uh, you you got to step up and take a step into Photoshop, but I think you'll find you can uh, have some fun with this. So I just wanted to let you know about it. We're going to explore the world of presets, a great tools. Uh, it's not cheating. Uh, it's uh, basically Adobe is set up. Well, they just put out a new load. It's probably 35, 40 presets that are available that you can play with. It just kind of, you bring your photo up, you go over the presets, you move your cursor over it, and you'll see the image change to how that preset would look. It's really kind of cool. Uh, then we're, I've got some photos uh, from myself, from Joy, and from Rob, and uh, th th that have all been shot within the last three weeks or so. And uh, this is a chance for you to kind of go through, and we're going to go through and work it take a little step-by-step -step through each of them. Again, the, the focus for this uh, session is bringing in some new information up front. 
and but then bulk of the time is going to be right here where you guys will be working these images uh, online with me. I'd like to introduce you to Panorama. It's really kind of cool. Uh, basically, it's the the thing is you shoot a picture of a tree over here. You can't get all the trees, so you shoot a little bit of that original tree and a little bit more. And Lightroom and Photoshop do a great job of a tool called Photo Merge. So we'll do that real quick. It takes about 38 seconds, so not very long. I'd like to introduce you to a great tool. Uh, for those of us who have shot for a while, uh, I, I know it's hard to admit, but I remember my first camera, I think it had three megapixels. And uh, of course, they've gotten bigger and bigger and bigger and better and better and better. But there's some images back from eight, nine, 10, 11 years ago, even longer, to where I've got these small files. Uh, Lightroom and Photoshop both have a, uh, a function now to where you can double the size of the image. And I've got some shots here and you can kind of look at them side by side and realize it's something to consider. If you do Topaz, I believe, uh, Hylos, you're a Topaz guy, aren't you? I've got a Gigapixel, which, yeah. which is the one you're talking about now. Yeah, so so Gigapixel, Topaz. <laughs> oh, uh, what, let me make one comment. You talk about the number of pixels. See that picture behind me on my little screen? That uh, my camera's got 12 megapixels, and that's all. And it's fantastic. And when this new gigapixel or this enlarge comes out, I'm not limited at all. OK. Yeah, it looks nice, Silas. So we're going to talk about that. Uh, then we're going to kind of close it up with a healing brush tool. Uh, back last year, we used an example of Hilos shot a picture out in the country with the phone wire going across. So in, in the spirit of trying to give you guys a little bit more real world experience when you're shooting your family, hint, hint, rosary, when you're shooting your family and you've got some stuff in your photos, like you have telephone poles growing out of people's heads and stuff, uh, it's a real quick and easy way of fixing it. So you guys ready to kick off here? Yeah. Okay. Uh, let me get my Lightroom over and we'll get started here. Mm. Mary Ann, it's good to see you. Hey, hi. Uh, how's the weather way down in Columbus? It's still a bit warm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I guess that means it's coming our way. Yeah. So on the uh, very first picture that I'd like to run with you guys with right here is, uh, let me unstack them. Sometimes these guys get a little bit undone here. So uh, this first image is one we shot out at Old Car City uh, back in January this year. When we, we'll do it again next year if you're in, interested in coming on out. But what I'd like to introduce you to is under the develop module, if you get uh, HSL, uh, hue, saturation, and luminance, the HSL panner, the very first one is one called hue. So if you look at this photo, I can click on this little picker right here. Can you guys see me moving my mouse around it? Yep. Mm -hmm. So with this picker, if I click it and I go over to this, I can actually click within it and influence. I'm moving my slider. I'm holding my mouse button down and I'm moving it up and down. So what it's doing is if you look at the slider on the right side under purple, you can see it kind of going left and right. But uh, what I'm just trying to introduce you to here is, if you have something that's kind of cool, think of blue skies or not so blue skies, or green grass or not so green grass. This is a really nice way to kind of go through and kind of adjust it for you just, just a little bit. Any questions on this? I have one. Um, so that it's only what you click on, so nothing else is gonna be, the color's gonna change? Oh, no, no, no. I, I just click on it because I take the uh, sloucher's way out. I do the easy way. Uh, what I'm trying to show you here, Rosary, is I could have guessed that this was a red color and moved the red slider back and forth, uh -huh. but you notice nothing's happening. I mean, visibly. 
So what does what the picker does? It says to Lightroom, it says, I want to look at the colors whenever I click down. I'm sorry, whenever uh, let me get the clicker, I turned it off. Whenever I click down right here, it does a sample and picks the colors. So when I move my slider up and down right here on the image, it's mm -hmm. not over there on the right side. It's actually moving everything for me. Uh, yeah, I could have sat here and guessed. I could have guessed that it was magenta instead, but you notice nothing is happening. So I find it easier just to go through and do it that way. Uh, if I can, let me cheat a little bit to your point. I'm going to, so on this image, would you say that there's a lot of gold there? Mm -hmm. Yellow, whatever. Well, yes. if I click on blue and move blue sideways, nothing's happening. But what I'm going to say to Lightroom is, hey, I want to use that picker under hue. And I want to click on some of the yellow and move my slider. And mm -hmm. you can see how you can adjust the colors within a certain gamut. Like this will go from, from green to red. It doesn't do a full gamut, but it's enough to where it may make it interesting for your photograph. Mm -hmm. So um, just a tip. Remember, I said if you ever double click on a uh, on a header like yellow, if I double click, see how it just went back to zero. So that's how you can do it. I could have also if I had all these cursors like this, double click on you and you would have reset everything under you as well. That's a great tip. I spent years, Hylos, I don't know if you did, Michael, I don't know if you did, moving these sliders all to zero and starting over. And then I saw this one and I fell out of my chair. It, it, was, it was really a lot of fun to find that one out. It's real easy, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. Okay, who has never done presets before? Hi. Rosary, I see your hand going up. Marianne, you were second. Okay, so here's the deal, guys. We are in the develop panel. This is where you do all your editing, as you know. If you look over to the left side, you notice how there's there's a panel there called presets? Yes. Okay, so Rosary, how do I open up that panel? You click on the arrow. You got it. So guys, look here. Uh, Adobe's given us all these presets already. All you need to do, you can open up these panels if you like, again, just like Rosary said, and watch what happens as I kind of move through this. It, it may be just a little bit of a lag for you with Zoom, but I'm on PD04 yellow, and it's giving me an interesting color. So Michael, when you were doing your, your autumn shot, I really like how the road went down. It's, it was a very nice leading line in that photo, by the way, and the yellow was gorgeous. Mm -hmm. uh, going Coming over the presets, you can just play and get a different look of feel. And uh, these are all the ones that Adobe just threw on your PC about uh, three minor upgrades ago. So it'll be right there under your presets. So but when the you're ones, doing like the red, I didn't see any change like the red because there's no red exactly when, in the picture. Well, like, it's kind of counterintuitive. It says red. I'm mm -hmm. not sure if it's stripping the red out or adding the red, but it's just doing wild stuff. Mm -hmm. Can I just say it that way? Uh, I, I'm good with that. Yes. I, I really don't understand the science behind it. If in, Michael, if you know, or Hylos, if you know, mm -hmm. chip in. I don't know All what the I science is, is but I do. It does. If you click on that uh, one over there on the preset, then you that doesn't the picture change, and then you can see where it changed. It's, what uh, the yeah. changes were on there. Oh. Yeah. So if I went up to basic, you would see uh, that it changed some of the values up here. And if you keep going through your curves and the HSL panel, you will see what 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 it changed. Uh, but when it says red, uh, I really don't know if it means it's adding red, taking away. I, I just appreciate it. That, that's all I do. Um, I would recommend when you guys do your competition photo uh, or photos in general that you want to have a little bit of style to. Uh, I wouldn't use this on family photos because they may get mad at you. But uh, if you use it on photos that 
really uh, no one knows what it looks like and you can just have fun. I, I really recommend you come over here and take a look at the presets. Uh, if Adobe's labeled all these right here when it says portraits, of course it, you can use it for whatever you want. Just open it up and move your cursor. Like I really like that one. Uh, see how it gave a little bit of, of a vignette to it. So uh, you can just sit here and kind of, once you do this, oh, I like that one, whatever that was, uh, that one right there, PM08 or something. It's basically so, a starting point, isn't it? It's a great point. Once you've gone through and you've adjusted your exposure and you've cropped down your image how you like it, and you're saying, this is my base image. Let me see how I can exp explore with this a little bit. So Rosary, uh, looking at color, I'm going to roll these over slowly and you kind of tell me when you like one or not. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I don't know. I like I'm waiting for, to compare them. Yeah, I know. It's just as you look at it visually, is yeah. there something that kind of uh, pops out at you? I like the one a couple up. Like it's a little bluer in the back, maybe. Yeah, I, I did too. Yeah, the one that had a little bit more blue in the back is what I liked. Yeah, I like that. Here's the one I, I really want to show you and let you have some fun with is uh, black and white. How many times have you guys shot something and it's kind of oh, like, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, Marianne, yeah. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you, Marianne. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Black and white is a great tool. I, I love coming here. It gives me a nice start point. And Judy, you talked about infrared. Guess what? There's uh, but here's here's the start uh -huh. point. It's like Hilo says, this is a start point to kind of get you going a certain way. And you can go back and tweak it however you want. So Rosary, you're still on. Just let me know when you see one that jumps at you. I, I like, that, like one. that one. See how yeah, it's I like that one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I think you're looking at the sky. You're picking up. Yeah, on that's that. real yeah. soft. Yeah. I I like the way the um the one that we were just looking at. I I don't feel like I'm 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 refined enough to really know too much. But I like when I see the there seems to be more movement in the in the Chihui. and that is Chihui, right? Yeah, it is. Yeah. <clears throat> Where it just seems like it's. When you see it more, more movement, some of the colors look more than others for some of the settings. I, I, I did one of my still lifes and I came over here to the panel and I stopped under Selenium, I think was the one I used. And it just gave a really nice feel to a photograph that uh, I had. And guess what? That's the photo I turned in for, for competition was that one. I, uh, I really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. So I just want to let you ladies know, and guys too, we got all these great little presets over here. Uh, if your computer is fairly fast, uh, you will see your big screen reflect the changes. But if your computer is a little bit older and slower, if you look up in the top left-hand corner, see how I have the uh, navigator window open? It gives that little snapshot there. Even if you have a slow computer like I used to have, um, I would find that my main screen wasn't keeping up with it. But if I just moved it down and looked at that left corner, I could go through it pretty quickly. And kind of like you said, Rosary, one just caught your eye right away. Or Marge said it. I can't remember who said it. So just kind of fun. So uh, <laughs> we're going to look at a black and white. And Rosary, I would like you to pick one out as a starting point. So I'm going to go through again. You you only have, we'll go through once and then we'll go through again. How's that? That's perfect. So this is landscape. And Judy, about two thirds down is infrared. Mm -hmm. I like that one. Okay. That Good. was punch. Okay. So that infrared is interesting. Yeah, there's your the infrared, Judy. Mm -hmm. I, I used infrared for one of my photos last year. And it, it was good. I really enjoyed it. But it's something I don't like using a lot. Uh, this is called split tone, as the name implies. If you look on the top, it's got a brownish tint. And on the bottom, it has kind of a blue, uh, a split tone. 
uh, right there that you can kind of play around with. So, um, Rosary, did you pick one or do you want me to go through them again? Oh, I had picked one, but go through it again. Punch? I'm probably going to pick a different one now. Um, the punch is the one I like, that one. Okay, we'll hang there. Okay, so we got punch going. So, Rosary, <laughs> now that we got this, so punch, what it does is, to your point, Hylos, if we go up the basic, we'll see everything that Punch did. If you notice, it moved the highlights down uh, and it jumped up the shadows and the whites and it dropped the blacks down right over here. And it clicked up the clarity quite a bit. That is one of my secret weapons whenever I want to kind of add a little bit of contrast or a contrast between black and whites, make it a little bit sharper is clarity and and dehaze if angie were on the call uh this is the one i would remind her that for that picture she took up in the black hills does great for knocking out fog or haze is dehaze so you can move the de dehaze around to kind of make it even just a little bit crazier see how it's bringing the clouds in it's cool oh so that is cool i like when the, cl the clouds get darker it just Kind of makes it more interesting. Okay, uh, I'd like to open it up to everyone. Are there any other changes that you guys would make to this? I can see a couple, so I'm I'm listening. Have you tried to do what your haze and texture with the way it is, then put your clarity down to a negative number and see sure. what happens? Yeah, it it haze brings kind up. Of, a, yeah, haze kind of makes like a fog almost. Yeah, and the clarity when you bring it down when your haze the haze is up, it makes an interesting effect. Yeah, see when you do the haze, it doesn't really have that kind of fuzzy yeah. like uh, clarity does. Yeah, because so when you keep it up like that, and then you put your clarity down, but keep your dehaze up and your texture up, and your clarity down, that puts in an interesting effect. Yeah, that doesn't show it as much, but it and has an interesting little, uh, what would you call it, softness effect mm -hmm. on some pictures. Yeah, so I'm going to slip the clarity back the other way. Mm -hmm. And to Judy's point, here's what happens. See how it just kind of, <laughs> it contrasts a lot. So when dehaze and clarity go, it, it just basically <laughs> nukes your image. And for some of the images, that may be exactly what you want. Uh, uh, can can anyone think of any other way that they would like to kind of kick the photo a little bit? How about with the adjustment brush? What what on here needs to be lightened or darkened just a little bit? Maybe the water. Okay. So I'm going to click new, and I'm going to click effect. I I I want to clarify what I. Uh, I've been saying the last couple of times, it seems to me, I've always said, click on the brush, click new and double click effect to mm -hmm. shake all the paint out. And, and that's good. But there's times when you want to keep those settings when you go to your next photograph. So you would not click new, uh, you would not double click effect to uh, reset your sliders back, back to zero. So I, I just want to kind of clarify that just a little bit. So in this in this situation, uh, so here's here's the one that I basically did uh, a little bit ago. Here's where we are a little bit ago. I did this six years ago. So uh, okay, I need some help. Uh, so we got the adjustment brush. What what, what needs to be done here? Uh, so reduce the reduce the contrast okay so everything in my brush it's this big you can kind of see it right there so you mm -hmm. want me to reduce the contrast and where would you like me to apply that michael um on the bottom of it okay so we're so basically when we're knocking the contrast we're knocking down the black and white a little bit here mm -hmm. so i I kind of like that in the center. You've kind of opened that up a little bit. Yeah, I like that. 
And Rosary, you said the water. So I'm doing a little bit on the water right here. I'm going to lighten it just a little bit. Hey, guys, here's the nice thing about the brush. Once you paint something, you say, you know, I could go a little bit lighter. Guess what? You can. You just move the exposure and you can play around with, with how you want it to look. You don't have to have it right the first time in your brush. You can play around with these things quite a bit. So I just want to let you know that that's, that's kind of the uh, a thing there. Another thing you may want to do is try the radial filter and just drag it down just a little bit. So if you notice the sky got really bright, but guess what? We go over here and we just change the settings a little bit. And it just kind of adds a little nice, nice effect to everything. Mm -hmm. going. So, I mean, uh, it's however you want. I would play off this. I'm going to click done to get out of the radio. I'm going to go back now, to the adjustment brush. Stop just a second. Uh, question, was that the radial or was that the... I'm sorry. I say radial. It's the graduated. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I, I say radial for them both. My bad. So, Michael, what I, I'm going to click new on here and I'm going to raise the exposure just a little bit. I want these nice little stoplights on the end here or street lights to kind of stand out. But you notice I just went over the edge, didn't I? See how it's light outside of the stem? What's where do I go to to see how my mask did on that keystroke? Do you guys remember? On the bottom with a little square. You're good. So I'm going to show the mask, or you can hit the letter O, whichever you prefer. And Michael, what's that key I hold down to take away from the mask? Starts with um, an A. Oh. Is, is it? Yeah, alternate. Yeah. So I'm going to hold down the alternate key. See how the brush has a minus sign now? Mm -hmm. But what I can do is now I can go back along the edge and I'm taking away that kind of mask spillover that I had. And of course, I could change, I could change the size of my brush down a little bit too. Isn't there an erase um, feature as well? There is. On the, okay. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Rosary. And it's uh, right down here at the bottom. Uh, remember, right here? Uh -huh. Same thing. Okay. Um, I just find as you start doing this more and more, uh, the alt key is there. The erase key, I have to cursor down right. to get to it. It's a shortcut. Yeah, definitely. You know, Lightroom is just like Photoshop. There, there's a hundred different ways to do the same thing. And, and that's not bad. Okay, so I'm... What I'm trying to show you guys here is just the mask feature. And so just like Rosary uh, said, I'm going to uncheck it, turn it off. And if you look now, it's it's a little bit cleaner. Yeah, I should have gone in and made it just a little bit better. What key do I hit here, guys, to zoom in in Lightroom? Do, do you know? Mm. The letter Z? Almost. Uh, control minus and control plus. Oh. Same, just like Photoshop. So you notice I kind of went through, did a little bit better that time. So I'm going to turn the mask off. If you notice, it's, it's a lot cleaner on the edge now. <clears throat> I'm trying to show you tools that I know you will use for your competition photos and also when you're doing stuff just for yourself. You know, I got to tell you, that's kind of cool right there, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It doesn't like even look that. like a photograph. Yeah, it's very cool. I like that. Mm -hmm. Gee, I wonder if there's a way in Lightroom that I can make a copy of that by not fooling around with my Lightroom copy. Does anyone know how to do it? Oh, I remember. You create a copy. Save, it, well, it, virtual save what? Save a copy? Mm -hmm. Nope. It's called virtual. Uh. Virtual copy. Virtual. Mary Ann, I'm mad at you for not knowing this one. <laughs> okay, so where I am right now, everything that I've done, I if I right click on the image, go up here. This is guys, this is wonderful. Mary Ann, one of the first questions she had when we did this last year, I think, or even this year, 
was she, she said, Pat, I want to learn how to resize my photos different ways. Well, here's the trick, guys. You do a virtual copy for each of the different sizes of the uh, images that you want to export. Very, very good. Cool. <laughs> so I'm going to go here. I'm going to create a virtual copy. So would you guys agree this one and this one are exactly the same? Yeah. Yeah. So here's what I'm going to do. On the original one that I was working on, I'm going to click on reset. And reset's going to take me back to the very beginning because I just want to have it look like that. But here's here's the here's the one that's kind of zoomed in. So you can go over here with the uh, crop tool. You know, because it's given you the idea, what key do I hold down whenever I'm moving the crops to keep the same aspect? It's same in Word, same in just about any program. Starts with an S. Shift. Shift. So if I hold down Shift, except Photoshop has changed, but but we won't go there. Photoshop's been doing it like it should have been done. So uh, I've cropped down a little bit. I clipped on it. Bing, bada, boom. I'm going to fit my image. And there I go. I have an image that has a completely different look and feel from this one. But you know what? There is not an there's not an extra copy made. It's not a saved copy. It's what you call a virtual copy. Uh, remember when I told you when when uh, Lightroom imports images into your desk into your catalog, it it never changes your original photograph, your original image. What happens is Adobe Lightroom captures everything you're doing and it builds it over here in this area that we call the history. So the history basically reflects everything we've done with this photo. And that's how it works. It's really kind of cool. But what's the difference between a virtual copy and then a copy? A copy implies that it has the same number of bits and bytes that the original uh, file has. Okay. Uh, you can export your copy. As far as what you can do outside of Lightroom, uh, when you export it outside, uh, it acts it acts just like a regular thing. But it's it doesn't build to where you you'll find out when you start doing Photoshop. And Michael, you may know this, but your the Photoshop files you bring back in because it's layers and everything Photoshoppy. These files are huge. And if you do a virtual copy of these Photoshop files or your JPEG files or your raw files, it hardly takes up any space at all. That's really the advantage of the virtual copy. So Marianne, let's say I, I like this little screenshot right here. I want to export this. I want to crop it down to see what it looks like in eight by 10. Does anyone know how to look at this with the crop of eight by 10? Isn't it aspect? Very close. So I click on the crop overlay tool. <laughs> Remember we did that? And here's the magic right here. See where it says original? You go down and you choose whatever you like right here. But wait, there's more. <laughs> Let's say that you have a wild file size. You want to you want to print this at say uh, 20 by 7. So that's 20 by seven, not 20 inches, but 20. So the ratio is 20 by seven. All you do is type in what you want and bing, bada, boom, there you go. <laughs> is that cool? So Marianne, when you have an image or so, anyone really, uh, I mean, I'm uh, not trying to pick no. on Marianne. <laughs> it's a great way to, uh, to uh, do it. Are you guys cool with how, once you, uh, Let's go back to this image. This is the one we were. Kind I do of doing. have a quick question on that printing, though the one that you were just looking at. Sure. So you did your your image like that, but let's say you want to have that size, but you want that little tiny top to be part of it. Is there any way you can ask it to shrink it down so that part fits? Judy, I'm not sure. Are you talking about the handles on the side moving these up? Or, yeah, or let me like like let's say you've got that um, that size there, 
but I like that really cute little cur uh, curly cue on the top. And it just does not fit with that size. So I want to like shrink. Yeah. yeah, but then let's say you want um, a little bit on the bottom to show too. You want it just a tad little bit more. Is there any way to tell the uh, computer to shrink it to that size? Why do I feel like I'm seeing the real Judy Gormley right now? Oh man, <laughs> I'll tell you why. I just want a little bit more. I want a little bit more because I'll tell you why. Because this past weekend when I was doing my um, um, still life, I tried to print it in a four by six and the little tiny top of it wouldn't fit in the four by six. And it's like, oh my gosh, you know? Um, so I was hoping that there's a way to just tell them to scrunch it just a little bit so it fits on a four by six. <clears throat> Well, maybe over beer, we can talk about it. Oh, but, man, uh, I might but, take more than a beer on that. Yeah, it's going into Photoshop and doing <laughs> yes. that. Yes. But uh, here's <laughs> the point that, uh, that that Judy's bringing up, though. If you notice right now, we're locked in at, at, at 8 by 10. Mm -hmm. If you notice, if I move anything out, see how it changes the entire. It still keeps the ratio of 8 by 10. Mm -hmm. If you want to unlock it, and say, I want to be in charge now. I want to go down and get that little extra. You can do it now. But the problem is when you go to print it, it's bigger than, than the eight by 10 paper you're trying to throw it on. So that's, that's it's kind of like this. So what you can do is take it into Photoshop and do an image resize, understanding that it won't fit exactly on an eight by 10 you're going to have some white space one way or the other. It's just like getting married. Nothing is as you expected or it's free. Yes. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. Joy's on this call, so I'm in trouble. <laughs> so, uh, okay. Yeah, th yeah. Thanks, Judy. Good question. Okay. Let's move on. To, oh, I'm sorry to go back to this one. So Marianne, we got this guy. I'm going to turn off the crop overlay. Dun, 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 dun. I want to print this for the uh, for the exhibition, but I want to do it 11 by 14. So how, how would I go about the process? The whole picture mm -hmm. or just a piece of it? Well, I, I think you know how this is going to play oh, out. Okay. So, uh, so Okay, so I click on crop overlay. The, right? the crop. Okay, and then where do I then, go? Go to the original. Perfect. Click on there. And you said. All the way down. There we go. Yeah. 11 by 14, way down. And okay. And, and it shows you what it's going to be. Ladies and gentlemen, there you are. So this is showing you. Hey, Chuck, welcome. Hi. <laughs> so this is showing you if you choose to, to, uh, to print it at, at an 11 by 14. Uh, this is what you want to get. Uh, I will tell you, if you want to cheat a little bit one way or the other, either uh, stretching the image up or to the side like Judy, I, I've done before. And but you, you have to step into Photoshop. Uh, Lightroom won't do that for you. So, I mean, really, uh, 11 by 14, uh, Marianne, I think you made a good choice here. But let's say, Marianne, you changed your mind and you said, Wait a minute, I've only got eight by 10 paper in my printer. How would I change this to eight by 10? I would go ahead and go on up to um, where did, it was original. Yes, originally and go up to eight to eight by 10. And it should switch it. A little bit. So it kind of gives you an idea how using different paper sizes, how your image is going to print out. Uh, quite honestly, I think we're all getting lazy right now with the competition. For those of you who are computing, boom, it just says 2,500 pixels and send it to me. Uh, whenever we go back to printing in the uh, at Sewell Mill, uh, you, you're going to have to figure all this stuff out. If you want to print an image at 11 by 14, 8 by 10, 5 by 7s are perfectly fine in competition. There is nothing saying how small it can be. Uh, our only limitation is the entire size. 
Hylos, I get this wrong every time, but is it um, 16 by 20 or? 11 by 14, I think, is what the uh, maximum size of your print. Wait a minute. I think I've got a, a note in here somewhere. Okay. I'm going to move on while you're looking it up. Thank you for looking it up. Okay. So, uh, Michael, is Michael still on? You're here. Okay. Uh, if you look at the picture on the right, Michael, see how it's it's been cropped down a bit? What I would like to do is to take this image here and crop it down so it looks like the other one. Can you guide me through the process? Okay, so you take the crop. turn off the crop tool. Okay, okay so. So you wanna, you wanna turn on the crop tool. Got it. Okay, and then just um, let's see. You take the aspect. Click on the aspect because you wanna, you wanna move those guidelines. You wanna center those guidelines across the center of the, of the picture. Are you, are you saying like that, this? Yeah. There you go. And keep going. Keep going. And I do the same from the yeah. top. Okay. Then go up to the top and go down to the bottom until you get um, until you get a perfect square. Okay. I'm glad you brought that up. Michael, if I wanted to make this a perfect square, where could I go and do that? Oh, uh, okay. Um, you go to custom and then click on oh, do, do, do. Inter, inter custom. One to one. Okay, one to one. Yeah, even though it says one to one, it's just saying that that all the sides are the same length and width. So just doing it like that. So if you notice that the lock is on, on the uh, clock over there, on the lock over there. So whenever I go up and down, see how it still keeps the uh, same aspect ratio you were talking about, Michael? Uh -huh. Watch what happens when I unlock the lock. Mm. Now I can do whatever I want. But if I want to keep that uh, ratio of one to one, I got to click on it and doing it that way. I, I like your idea of a square. I think that's good. So um, I don't know. Is that pretty close? Yes. OK, how do I tell Lightroom that I am done doing this? Done. OK, I'd be done button right here. <laughs> or you can double click on it, or you can click on the crop tool again. 100 ways to do the same thing. So there we go. Looking good. Looking very good. So my, Michael, you know, you're thinking about this. And Marge, you've been awfully quiet. Thank you. So Marge, uh, you're kind of looking at this. I've had a hard day. No, it's okay. <laughs> well, I'm sorry that you had a hard day. So, uh, so Michael got us this fine, Marge. Um, you know, you're thinking to yourself, I would like to see a copy of this and just work it in monochrome. What's the way you can create a copy of this in Lightroom? Well, you said there are no copies. It's a virtual copy. Right. One so, more left in my box. My OK, mind. so uh, what do I do on this image right here? Uh, going all the way downstairs. <laughs> so I right click, right? Yes, you do. And you look for a virtual copy. Got it, girl. You're jamming. So we just a little help a from my topic. friend. <laughs> Guys, here's the beauty of this. Again, you can play with different print sizes, Marianne. Marge, you can play around with all the presets. You can have three <laughs> or four different versions of the same thing. I, I, you know. I have a question. Sure. So the how is the virtual copy managed inside of Lightroom? It's so magic. You 
So you can close out a Lightroom and when you come back, it's still gonna be there. Yes. And you can manipulate it, you can print it, you can export it somewhere. You can bend it, shape me any way you want. As <laughs> long right. as you do it in Lightroom, you're all, all right. right. I'm sorry, Joy. I'm sorry, Joy, but it's your problem. <laughs> Marge, thank you for getting me off point here. Uh, I, I want to convert this to black and white and pick a good one. How do I do it? Um, over into presets. Okay. Where would you recommend we go? Um, somewhere there. Didn't it have black and white or something? Yeah. Buddy. Hey, go on down. There. Okay. Yeah. We're just going to go through this. You tell me we're going to go through it once and then. That's nice. Hey, uh, Rosary, just to let you know, I'm partial to the uh, punch. But sometimes, you know, these things just have different feels and. Mm -hmm. It's all good. I mean, there's, there's great. So Marge, pick one. I'm going to go through it and you tell me when to stop. I, I don't know. I like landscape and I like punch. Okay. So you like that one or punch? Okay. So pick one. That works. Got it. uh let's see um interesting how laura, the little white dots pop out in it yeah right really. so laura uh if you wanted to do anything to this what would you do i would heal the bright white triangle thing in the lower right corner okay Ooh, good eye. that's a good eye what tool would i use to kind of do a spot removal i would use the spot removal tool <laughs> I tell you. thank you for throwing me a bone there laura is psychic i mean <laughs> okay so if you guys remember the uh, it's hard to see because it's let's see if i put it i'm putting it right now right there you kind of i'm wiggling it mm -hmm. so on mine i can move my mouse on top of the uh, i'm moving the wheel on top of the mouse and i'm making it just a little bit bigger there Okay, Laura, so what do I do now? Um, this, I usually do this part over in Photoshop. I'm working okay. on it in Lightroom. That's, so I would click the spot I want to fix. Oh, uh, the stamp it tool. like puts a little circle over what it thinks I want it to look like. And then I move that circle to where I get what I want it to be. Is okay. that right? Same here. Just to let you know in Lightroom, it's it's 180 degrees different. So what you do is you just paint what you want to replace. And then Lightroom goes out and it says, Laura, I think this is the good place. Are you guys seeing where it thinks mm -hmm. it's good? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? You can click on that and drag it to another area that you think would be a little bit better. Yeah. But to Laura's point, she just wants to take that white away so it doesn't jump out. Yeah, I just want it darker. And I agree. That's there. fine. I agree. Thank you, Laurie. Anything else you would like to do to this photo? I am sure there's a lot that can be done, but I'm done. <laughs> okay. Okay, Laura, you are not off the hook yet. Uh, oh we would like to print this uh, as a square. So where would I go to kind of format so I could see how the format would be if I wanted to print it as a square. It could be okay. eight by eight, seven by seven, right. uh, 14 by 14. Where do go I go? To the crop tool. You got it. And then to the little area over there by the lock. Got it. And go to one by one. Okay, so if you want to square. So you got lucky. So we were already there. there. Yeah. You wanted it to be what? Uh, what? Eight by 10. Okay, go back there and scroll down to the four by five slash eight by 10. You got it. So it's uh, just kind of doing it this way. Uh, if you guys, if Michael were looking at this and I'm going to do control plus, oh, I'm sorry, I got the tool active. It doesn't work, but. Uh, nah. 
Now, once you're in the tool, you can't move it around. But Michael, let's say that you, it's got the eight by 10, you're kind of happy with it, but you don't like it this way, you want to turn it on its side. What is the key you would hold down as you're grabbing the edge and moving it around to keep it so it's like at, like at 90 degrees? Is it the alt key? Almost, almost starts with the S. Oh, the shift key. You got it, man, you got it. So if you notice right now, I'm holding down the shift key and as I turn it, pfft, okay, something's up and it ain't me, babe. Um, okay, I don't know why it's doing this. It should not be doing this. Go inside uh, the square. Go oh, yeah. Uh, nah. We're having trouble. On the corner of the square? Yeah, when it goes to the thing like that, that's when you should be able to rotate it. Yeah. But I've never seen the image rotate hmm. before. That's weird. Oh, okay, oh. this is the it first is and last time we're doing this, puppy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <sighs> there. Okay, Pat, Pat, there's one other way they can do this thing back. Go to one of the color ones. Okay. All right, now go over on the um, edit thing over there. See where it says color is bright? Click the black and white. Yep. And then start from there. You don't have to, you don't have to do a preset is what I'm saying. I look so great, a great way to bring up another alternative way of doing things. Mm. Yeah, that's nice. this, this six <laughs> one and a half dozen of the other. So it's, but it's nice. It's, it's nice. Thank you. Okay. Excellent. Okay, so here's a picture Joy did for her. Um, which one did we just do? Uh, still life. Still life. Still life. Okay, so you guys are looking at here's the final version that Joy finally did. She was nice enough to share this. And here's the original that she did when she did painstakingly did everything on the tripod. Hmm. What are some of the touches you would do to this photo to get it ready for competition? And let's see, uh, who have I talked to? Diane, I noticed you're kind of blacked out. Are you, are you still game to take part in this? Yes. Okay, you're on young lady. No idea. She's got an. She's on her iPhone. Yeah, yeah. But can she see it on iPhone? Oh, oh, oh Diane. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. Oh, okay. Help so, uh, so kind of looking at this, are there are there any parts of the image? Uh, I guess the first thing I always do is crop. Are Are you happy with how it's cropped? Well, I will crop off. Oh, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. 